shopping to nightlife, affordability, and job opportunities. In this video, I'm covering the top places for young professionals to live in the Chicago suburbs. So keep watching. What is happening everybody? This is Austin Weiss, your go-to real estate agent right here in the Chicagoland area. If you're brand new to my channel or returning, I do a ton of videos all about what it's like to work, eat, live, and play right here in the Chicago Metro. And I am getting so many calls, texts, and emails from people that are looking to make a move, and I absolutely love it. So if you are planning on making a move anywhere in the Chicagoland area, shoot me a text, give me a call, or send me an email, days, nights, weekends, and I would love for the opportunity to simplify your whole move for you. Okay, so don't get me wrong. If you're a young professional who loves to do things at all hours of the day and loves to be surrounded by a ton of other young professionals in the city environment, then definitely look into moving downtown Chicago. It's a blast. But if you prefer less noise, more space, affordability, and overall for your lifestyle, it makes more sense to move to the burbs, then listen up as I break down the top Chicago suburbs for young professionals to live in. These are based on my own experiences living or exploring these areas, as well as key factors such as job opportunities, commute times, affordability, population age, access to cafes, bars, and restaurants, cost of living such as home prices and average rental prices and diversity score. Full transparency, this list is in no particular ranking order. What I did is I took the closest collar suburbs to the city, made my way out further west. So without any further delay, first on my list is Oak Park and it's super cute downtown area. This is a fantastic location as it's a commuter's paradise, access to the Metro train, the Green Line and the Blue Line. With about a quarter of the population aged 20 to 39 years old, Oak Park features a wide variety of housing options, new and old, with several new condo and apartment style living options right downtown Oak Park, where a majority of the bars, restaurants, and cafes are located. Don't count out all the awesome shopping along Oak Park Avenue and Madison Street as well. Like I said, this is a commuter's paradise, so if you don't own a car, you can easily walk throughout the city as everything is very close proximity. And you can get downtown really quickly via Metro train that takes you right into Ogilvy, the green line that takes you right into the Chicago's Loop, or the blue line along I-290 that takes you right into the medical district. If you do have a car, it's a quick drive into the city or out to the further western burbs. You can always find something to do, whether it's through the park district, meetup groups, the different festivals located on Marion Street right downtown, especially Thursday night outs in the summer, the beer and wine fest, as well as the fall festival. It's a fantastic time. There's three different breweries located right here in Oak Park, including One Lake Oak Park Brewing Company and Kinslonger. I would highly recommend checking all three of those out. And it's just an overall really cool and diverse environment. Moving west directly next door to Oak Park is the town of Forest Park, dubbed Oak Park's hot neighbor, probably because of the housing prices. You can get a single family house on average for under 400,000 and a townhouse for slightly higher than 200,000. There's a lot of young professionals moving here as 36% of the population is aged 20 to 39 years old. Madison Street is the downtown area which has a ton of restaurants, bars, and local boutiques boutique stores, some of my favorite restaurants, Cafe de Luca, Fat Duck Tavern, and Scratch Kitchen and Lounge. Along with Exit Strategy Brewery, definitely go there for lunch and dinner. They have some of the best food in the area. Now, if you're looking to satisfy your sweet tooth, visit Brown Cow Ice Cream Parlor located right on Madison Street in downtown Forest Park. They have some of the best handmade ice cream in the entire Chicagoland area, along with several other tasty treats. If you're looking to party, they shut down Madison Street quite often in the spring, summer, and fall for street festivals uh, and various other concerts. And you can see the Chicago skyline in the distance and it's a really cool environment just to see that now along with Oak Park Forest Park has access to all three train lines the blue the green line and the Metro stop so it's really easy to commute into the city by train that's no problem and if you prefer to drive it has access to 290 to get into the city or out to the western suburbs if you're looking to get a little bit of exercise adult softball leagues are a big deal here and there's even a 16 inch softball Hall of Fame making our way up north to the village of Evanston. It's where Chicago meets the North Shore. It's actually ranked the number one place to live in all 
of Cook County, number two on niche.com for young professionals, and it's the home of Northwestern University. I personally love attending Big Ten football games at Ryan Field and Big Ten basketball games at the new Welsh Ryan Arena. With 30% of the population aged 20 to 39 years old, it's about 14 miles from Chicago's Loop. It has three metro stops and access to the Purple Line, which will take you right into the Loop downtown Chicago or about 35 minute drive to the center of Chicago on Lakeshore Drive. Rich in arts and culture, there are several shopping districts, including Main Street and Dempster, which is one of the best places to go for independent stores, and downtown Evanston with its plethora of mid-rises and views of downtown Chicago, awesome nightlife, bars, and restaurants, and it's just steps away from Clark Street Beach, which is an awesome time in the summer to enjoy the waters of Lake Michigan. And if you're a park junkie like I am, grab a book and go visit Merrick Rose Gardens, Dawes Park, or Centennial Park. They have beautiful scenery, gardens, and it's just an overall fantastic atmosphere. I almost forgot to mention, Evanston is home to three breweries, Smiley Brothers, Temperance, and sketchbook and the cost of living overall is very comparable to the city of chicago with slight variances in rents and cost for food now the average price for a single family house is roughly 740,000, with condos and townhouses on average going for slightly more than 300,000. making our way south to the area of lagrange i actually included three different towns in this particular section because the population is about 47,000 combined so it includes lagrange lagrange park and brookfield it's about 15 to 17 miles outside of Chicago's Loop, and 20% of the population is aged 20 to 39 years old. Now, LaGrange is one of the top downtowns in the western suburbs, which I featured in my top downtown video, which you can watch right here. LaGrange Road is the main drag, which features delicious and tasty restaurants, including The Elm, Persino, Steak and Vime, Monk's Burgers, and there's a of course, a metro stop so you can commute into Chicago no problem. Just north of the tracks, there's a Trader Joe's. And if you prefer to drive, you can quickly get onto I-55, which is a non-toll road, so you don't have to pay tolls driving into the city. On the way into the city from I-55, you actually pass Midway Airport, so if you like to fly southwest like I do, that's the go-to airport in the Chicagoland area. Uh, endless fun at Brookfield Zoo. One of the top zoos in the country is located right in Brookfield, along with LaGrange Theater, originally built in 1925. It's right downtown LaGrange, still runs movies every day of the week. And if you want to get your fit on and hike and bike, there's tons of trails along Salt Creek and all those forest preserves uh, on the north end of LaGrange Park and Brookfield. So the go-to breweries in this area, if you want to whet your appetite, get a brewski, is Imperial Oak and Milk Money. Milk Money is located right on LaGrange Road, downtown LaGrange. And... Endless Summerfest in LaGrange every August. It features music, fun, memories, and of course you can grab some drinks, kick back with some friends, and just enjoy the awesome weather. Hey, if you like this video so far, give me a thumbs up and hit subscribe, and leave me a comment down below. It helps my videos reach more people just like you who are looking for great advice when it comes to real estate. Making our way a few towns north to the village of Elmhurst, it's a fantastic centralized location right in the middle of all the suburbs in Chicagoland. It's about 18 miles outside of Chicago's Loop, which quick access on the highway or the metro train, uh, commuter train downtown Chicago on the express would only take you about 30, 35 minutes. And Oakbrook is just to the south, which is a main business hub as well in the Chicagoland area. It's right next door to Elmhurst. The downtown area is super cute and cool and rich in history, has fit spare keys with multi-level bowling and has a fantastic brewery elmhurst brewery that i've been to several times it has delicious food a fun atmosphere and if you love bags they have a backdoor patio as well population of about 46,000 and 21 percent of the population is aged 20 to 39 years old. If you're looking for a good time and love free music like I do, Elmhurst features the Block to Block Party and the Rock to Block Party every summer. They have a Memorial Day Parade that's been running since 1918, and they actually have the third largest St. Paddy's Day Parade in the entire Chicagoland area. If you love to bike, jog, and hike, they have the Illinois Prairie Path that runs right through Elmhurst out to St. Charles. Uh, so that's a really safe environment to get your fit on. Uh, the main employer in Elmhurst is Elmhurst Hospital, and they have dozens of outpatient centers sprawled throughout the Chicagoland area. This is probably one of the more expensive spots on my list, with townhouses being roughly $420,000 
and single family homes going for just under 600,000. Due west of Elmhurst are the villages of Lombard and Villa Park. They're about 20 miles outside of Chicago's Loop. Both towns feature metro stops, so it's a quick train ride into the city. They're about 20 minutes outside of O'Hare Airport, so if you need to fly somewhere for vacation, work, whatever, it's a quick trip to the airport. And it's also a very quick ride to Oakbrook, which is one of the main business districts in the western suburbs. Now, there's been quite a few young families and young professionals moving to this area in the last few years because of the home affordability. Now, for townhouses and condos in both towns, they're just under 200,000 as an average price point. The single family houses in Lombard go for roughly 340,000 on average and Villa Park just about 300,000. With a combined population of 66,000, you'll find aged 20 through 39, covering about 30% of the total population. This area features quite a bit of nightlife and entertainment. Now, Villa Park has the Odium Expo. They bring in different music, concerts, entertainment, and sporting events. And they also have Windy City Curling. So if you're looking to get off the couch in the wintertime, this is the only curling club in the entire western suburbs so maybe take a look at that if that's something you're interested in doing uh, lombard has butterfield road tons of restaurants nightlife clubs and shopping along with yorktown mall just off the highway and then more brewing sits in between the trailheads for the great western trail and the illinois prairie path that run all the way out to the fox river so if you're looking to get some biking in jogging and hiking those are really cool paths and they go for many many miles but more brewing has some delicious beers and food and then lombard features the og noon whistle with some fantastic sour beers which i absolutely love next on my list is lyle downers grove and kind of an offshoot of downers grove the town of woodridge i included woodridge because they share the same school districts with downers grove and you can get a single family house in woodridge for in the mid 300,000s. Now, Downers Grove has one of the best downtown areas in the entire Chicagoland area. Uh, Main Street goes right through through the downtown area, cute boutique shopping. I actually did an entire vlog video recently about Downers Grove, so if you wanna watch it, you can click right here. Lyle also has a Main Street for their downtown. It has really cute shops, uh, restaurants. Yerba Buena is the go-to taco joint and Mexican restaurant right down there. They have a wine bar, a whiskey bar, and they just built Mark on Main right next to the train stop which is a fantastic luxurious apartment complex so if you're looking to rent and not buy right now that could be a great option for you as well as in downtown downers grove there have been quite a few condos and apartment towers that were built within the last i would say five to ten years so there's some some fantastic living options for you again i talked about that in greater detail in my vlog video so definitely recommend taking a look at that all three towns have a combined population of roughly 100,000 with 28% of the population aged 20 to 39 years old. All three of these areas feature some phenomenal forest preserves, parks, and recreation areas. Again, definitely look into my Downers Grove vlog as I featured quite a few of the parks and recreation areas in that video. Now, Lyle has the Mort Arboretum, which is a phenomenal complex with walking paths, gardens, forests, and quite a few ponds. They throw a extravagant lighting festival during the holiday season, along with various other 5K wine tastings and events throughout the year. And the Green Valley Forest Preserve in Woodridge, it's a fantastic biking and hiking trail com complex uh, that I use quite often. Now, Downers Grove, the average price point for a single family home will run you roughly 500,000 with townhouses and condos being about 220,000. In Lyle, they'll be about 400,000 for on average for a single family house while a townhouse condo will be just under $200,000 on average. Making our way north to the village of Schaumburg. Now this is about 28 miles outside of Chicago's Loop, but there is a Metro train stop so you can get into the city no problem. Eight miles from O'Hara Airport and roughly a population of 76,000 with 26% aged 20 to 39 years old. Nightlife, clubs, restaurants, entertainment. They actually have Woodfield Mall here, which is the 10th largest mall in the entire country. Uh, medieval times, Legoland, and the OG Top Golf here in the area. So if you want to correct your golf swing, you can definitely go there and, and explore that option. Now, quite a few young families and young professionals have moved to this area because of the home affordability. Single family homes in this area will run you on average about 385,000 with townhouse and condo options just over 200,000. If you love baseball, don't want to head all the way downtown Chicago, you can check out the Schaumburg Boomers baseball team. It's a minor league team with a stadium located right Right there in Schaumburg. The tickets are super affordable along with the beers, food, and a lot of the other entertainment that they provide. 
Uh, also, there's 5,000 businesses located right here in Schaumburg with some of the major employers being Motorola Solutions, uh, Zurich, North America, and Paylocity. There's also 1,100 acres of parkland here. Uh, some of the main forest preserves and parks are Boosie Woods with trails, boating, and fishing. And also on niche.com, there's an A rating for cultural diversity, which is predominant in Schaumburg's population. 29 miles west of Chicago's Loop is the village of Wheaton with a population of about 53,000, 26% is aged 20 to 39 years old. There's a Metro train stop right downtown that will take you right into Ogilvy Station in downtown Chicago. Along the tracks running through downtown Whedon is the Illinois Prairie Path, which I've already mentioned several times in this video. And downtown is a really cool area with boutique stores, cafes, and restaurants, including some of my favorites, Altero Latin Fusion, Burger Social, Eglectic, and some of the best best deli food around at Schmaltz Delicatessen. There's two breweries right downtown, Emmett's Brewery and Dry City. The village of Wheaton has some of the most beautiful homes, in my opinion, in the Chicago suburbs, with the average price point of single family houses being about 486,000 and townhouse condo options being roughly 250,000 on an average price point. Now, Wheaton is also home to Cantini Park, which is 500 acres of beautiful gardens and fields. And they also have a war museum and the McCormick Mansion was actually in the movie, The League of Their Own, featuring Tom Hanks. There's also a 27 hole golf course. Now I love going to Wheaton to hike and bike because they have some of the best forest preserves in the area, including Blackwell Forest Preserve, Herrick Lake, and Donata. Last but certainly not least is the city of Naperville, one of the top places to live in the entire country. It really is a small city with a population of about 150,000, 23% aged 20 to 39 years old. Now I know you might have done some research watching my other videos or reading some blogs online and you're wondering why this town is in the Young Professionals video, but there really is something here for everyone that's so large. There's a variety of options uh, as far as living, nightlife, outdoor space, and whatever you're interested in, Naperville most likely has it because it is so big. Now, the downtown area is probably, in my opinion, the best in the entire Chicago suburbs. It has the Riverwalk, the Millennium Tower, some fantastic restaurants, bars, and just a great overall scene that's safe and clean. And if you're looking to have a little bit of fun, definitely check out iFly, Top Golf, and Whirly Ball. And if you want to get involved in some community organizations, meet some people, make some friends, Naperville has a ton of different organizations for you to get involved with. Now, there's a variety of different living options with the average price point of single family houses being about 575,000 and townhouse condo options being roughly 275,000 on average. Now, if you ever have any interest in any of the 10 towns that I've talked about today, you can always reach out to me by phone, text, email, days, nights, weekends, and I would love to have a conversation with you about your moving plans. But until next time, I'll catch you guys later.